Ian starts out by saying, help please. Uh, so is it correct to say that whether the user, the client, has Microsoft Teams or an external user, he, she can still have access to the chat before, during, and after the meeting? This is uh, that lovely answer of it depends, right? Yeah. All right. Exactly. <laughs> thank you for that help. All right. Yes, they <laughs> can, but do they? Yeah. That's a, it's yeah. up to the settings by the administrator, whether they have that or not. And then I think even now, isn't it a setting on the meeting itself? Or is it just a server or tenant level setting? For me, the thing that is, has, has been uh, noticeable in that, that case is if, if I am a member of the tenant, I uh, even a guest member, uh, the chats will go on and on and on and on to generally they have a preset limit. They go back to some extent and then they stop. Uh, but if I come in as someone with who is just invited and not a member of the tenant, well, that's that's the time when your chat doesn't work. And um, if you do get something going, uh, if the chat completely disappears and is no longer available, well, for example, the meetings that I used to have when we this this thing first started, uh, my login or something would go away and I would lose the chat every week. You and weren't I have able to, to start a brand new chat either. There was times where you didn't have the no. chat available to you either. So, yeah, yeah I remember that. Or poor, poor Hal couldn't chat with us. <laughs> I think we've all we've all experienced that with uh, some mm -hmm. of the earlier days, and it's something that as the you know the it, it was like the lines of demarcation between uh, the roles and the tenants was different. So like you you'd realize nothing's working. Oh, I logged into that meeting under my work profile instead of my community profile, and so you'd be like, hey, I'll be right back. You go switch tenants and over. It's, you know, so that they're adding more intelligence. I know Microsoft is looking at solving a lot of these problems long term. So those these issues should go away. So whether you are a member of that tenant or not, it's almost like permissions should be based around like I was invited. Let me participate in the thing Good that I was point. invited to regardless right. of mm -hmm. that. Yeah. And the system should know <laughs> that it's still me. And what we need is. And these the multi login, the multi profiles, where it knows my my company login, my Microsoft community login, and it knows that both of them are me and treats me the same, no matter which one I'm logged into when I join a meeting that I was invited to. Unless they've turned the feature off on the meeting itself, because there's right. you can disable yes. the camera and all of that in the meeting itself. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And because otherwise, you know, it's, it's um, the TML syndrome. Too many logins. <laughs> Multiple personality. Exactly. Is that like a like this sort of, the that. psychological <laughs> answers for this? The uh, you know the, the multiple. Which I've profiles. actually had to have, had to do on a couple of teams meetings when oh they are so continuously playing with this teams client. And there have been, oh, it's been about a month or so ago, a, a couple of occasions when uh, I could actually start up the team's uh, meeting, get the meeting set up, get ready to join and then press the join button and it would just go off into never left behind. And they, so I couldn't get it to come back from that. I found that if I went off and joined it to a web browser, same meeting. Mm -hmm. It's just bizarre. Yeah. But, you know, it wouldn't be teams if it weren't bizarre. Yeah. <laughs> True. That's right. That's right. So I was going to go with my my joke around uh, that they've not yet addressed the issues of someone with multiple logins and multiple tenancies and multiple personalities. So yet another wrinkle, another yeah. layer <laughs> to go and solve around that. You know? yeah. It's true. I, I think and, the, and, and, and the more tagline. logins, too, for that matter. I mean, I've got two. I've got a business login and I've got a, a personal login. And that's all this thing will recognize. In the business login, I've got four tenants divine. And in the in the personal login, because there are like two or three, I, I use the personal login mostly for anything Microsoft, just to keep the business stuff and the, and the MVP stuff kind of separated. Um, and I got like five down there. 
And then mm -hmm. there's one other, there's a third login I would use, and that's what's going to be used for uh, the uh, the Chicago users group. They're putting on a big wing ding uh, next month, and I'm going to be in there helping doing the moderating stuff and that kind of back in the, you know, emptying the water baths, the, the, the waste cans and re refilling the water bottles and that, <laughs> that, that kind of stuff as well as I can virtually. Um, but but so there's a third user that could go in there and it's. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the thing being oh, Grace is that, that at least if you're in the same. <laughs> if at least if you're in the same tenant and you're going to do something, you can you can put the, the, the team's client itself like I, I'll have three PGI more pretty much the PGI's in the same time uh, on a given morning. Um, for the rest and of the so listeners, know what we're talking the about. Client. The PGIs are and like the Microsoft MDT, uh, you know, the NDA really, you know, calls. Yeah. And so, yeah. yeah, we get sucked into a lot of those. And so some of them overlap. And I think most of us here have all tried to log into one of them on the desktop, had a second one running on the browser. <laughs> yeah. Or on your phone. You That's can right. actually run up to two of them in the browser. <laughs> Yeah, which is, right, or which multiple is the, of the browser. That's about right. my limit. Yeah. Yeah. Three yeah. concurrent meetings is, is, is at the stage chaotic. I have issues trying to take yeah. care of it. it does. But Sherry, I just pulled up the an individual <laughs> meeting form, and I didn't have the ability to say yes or no to the persistent chat after a meeting wrap. So that is still going to be at the Teams admin yeah. settings Control level. Set. Yeah. Yeah. So yep. does, does anyone know if you are in a meeting and you disconnect from the actual meeting, but the chat is still available in your Teams client. You have the option to mute, or sorry, to leave the meeting chat. If people came back to that and started chatting in there, do you know if you would be able to return to that chat and see those Thank messages? You. Yes. Yes. Oh, okay. I'll let you time. Yeah, you can. Uh, these. Oh yeah, with okay. these meetings that I attend in the daytime, they'll, you know, there'll there'll be one on some Office 365 subject, and uh, you know, the meeting is running. And basically, what I'll do is I'll I'll take my log into the Microsoft tenant, and and do all my meeting work in there. Basically, because yeah. I got the most access to the sure. to, to the various teams in there. But I mean, I will unless I change back to the business tenant. As long as I keep the uh, the, the the Microsoft tenant open, uh, I mean a meeting that could have ended a day ago with its chat still open, somebody will come back in. Hey, yeah. where is the recording? Well, that well, that's the, just but that's yesterday. the difference, though. So I, I don't think there's a question about that. If you you've not left oh. it, like by you're still a member of that, you still have access to that. Like so, we've got that with some of these calls where the chat could go on mm -hmm. for days. You could see other things, but mm -hmm. if you intentionally leave that that group. Like if you go, it, 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 can you rejoin that and go go see it? Um, like or or, or once I you think depart you can. it, I, I don't I think, think you can. I don't think I, you can. I think that's the difference between leave and hide because you can yeah. hide it and it will reactivate. Unless it's a persistent meeting and they and you join it. that meeting again, then right. it'll come back. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You that's the thing. Most of these are persistent you meetings. Joined the meeting. Yeah. yeah. No. That. Yeah. That's that's a that's an important point. If it's a one off. No, you, you leave it, you've left it, so you can't rejoin it. But if it's a recurring. That would be the case yeah. with the meetings that you used to run. Yeah, well, that's what I just, I, I would leave those going. But that's why for the, those, I, what I, my option is I mute them. So yes. I can go back and find the conversation. So I yep. will mute almost all of those. So I'm not getting the notifications and things mm -hmm. around it. But when I need it, it's there and it's searchable and it's, you know, everything else that I can. And I'll usually I'll go back, especially on these like these MVP calls that, you know, is and I'll go back and say, what have people been talking about the last couple of days around that? Mm -hmm. um, so it's a uh, yeah, it remains searchable. Yep. Yep. But I think that's Me an too. important bonus feature to highlight, too. You can be in a meeting because in those MVP calls, you cannot hide the chat. There's too much good stuff going on in the chat, yep. but you get those little you toasts betcha. popping up all the time. So if you're in a meeting like that, go mute the chat 
in your chat pane in Teams and just stay there, and that'll keep it from being quite right. so chaotic. Yeah, it blows up my phone too. Oh, right. Yeah. I'm get from three different things, you know. <laughs> yes, too much TMO. Oh, by by default, I mute just about everyone that I'm that I'm yeah. in. So totally.